Hey, what's up, guys? Tukey here, back again with another episode of my Canada-based draft of glory, road to glory. I don't really have a title for this series yet, but welcome back to another episode. Now, in this episode, the goal is pretty straightforward. Sim through as much of, if not all, of our first season here with the team. Now, we left the last episode with a couple of questions, but the main one was how much am I going to be playing? And based off of your feedback, for the most part, we're only going to be playing crucial games uh, for both the club and the international teams. So with that being said, there's not that, or with that being the plan, there's not much to do in this first season other than sim and really we're not going to be expected to be all that successful in any key games for us this season what's the point we're not going to find success running guys like bear or buyer I, I don't know if it's buyer or bear i think it's buyer uh you know colon as well the colin i'm calling him colon regardless it looks like colon it's probably colin but you know with guys like him or those two okello and frazier we're not going to have much success when simming even if we are in the third tier so this episode is going to be primarily simming ahead getting players into the youth academy and trying to build up the base the foundation of this team through this first season. Of course, this is not going to be an overly quick process. And we're not done, of course. The last episode was just the beginning. We still have all of these half-decent players that are targets, most of them prospects, but again, not all. We do have guys, I mean, Atiba Hutchinson won't be a factor, but I mean, we do have guys that are either just turned 30 or that are approaching 30, who I also hope to eventually have as key members of not only the international side of things, but the main team here as well. And of course, throughout, not only, you know, who we find from the Youth Academy, but who other teams find from the Youth Academy, regens may also be a factor. So we'll see what happens here. Again, for the most part, it's going to be skipping ahead and doing the most that we can, which actually, uh, let me just sim this game quickly here against the Schwickau, and we'll see what happens. Now, of course, we are going to be battling as we end up losing two to one we are going to be battling against the goals for the season that other teams have or that are not that other teams have but that our owner has and that's really going to uh really going to complicate things with the roster overall but let's go ahead the one thing i really wanted to talk about of course was the training now there was the debate over oh do more than just say in here let's just put a uh, buyer in there for example do more than just to keep the pace drill the reason why i'm spamming that of course is it's the only way that you can train up a player's stamina through training normally of course i would do race against the clock but for now the main goal for a lot of these guys is to just get the stamina levels up there because they're brutal for a lot of people they're going to be brutal for players coming out of the youth academy the rest of the attributes can still develop but the stamina is the main thing that we're going to want to focus on so i will be spamming that uh, that first drill to keep the pace drill for the most part if we end up running you know a drill with a second player like we are with Akello, obviously we'll be doing a gold level training session uh, that said though i think we're good for the moment so i will see you guys at the beginning of the next month there'll be a lot of jump cuts like this or a lot of fast forwarding like this in this episode i'll see you guys at the beginning of october when we'll see who our scout ends up finding and training wise of course i'm gonna have to start focusing on the guys that we just found and that we added to the Youth Academy, uh, the initial batch of prospects, including the, the gem of them all right now, Peter Gagnon, who is probably going to be Captain Canada sooner rather than later. As expected, not exactly killing it in the league thus far. That is okay. That is not our focus. Our focus, of course, is adding to this team. Unfortunately, uh, Theo, yeah, he tore his LCL, so he's going to be out for two months, so no real development there for our young striker, but let's see who's available, and we finally get a goalkeeper. I say finally, because normally it doesn't take that long. Jose Morgan, the six foot seven Canadian, 61 to 85. You'll love to see it, good addition. Peter Mathis, not so good, but we'll still be signing him for now. Same with Jose Wolf. The, the Jose's are out of control. We'll sign Jose Wolf to Ethan Morgan. We get another goalkeeper, 67 to 91. At six foot four, the 16 year old Walter Cameron, 69 to 93 at 6'2, hoping he's a center back because, again, 
I think when we finally play those key games to make it even more difficult rather than messing with the sliders, I'm probably going to go with a three at the back formation and probably just play left back and right back at center back. Maybe it depends on who the best available are. So, uh, you know, I'd prefer him to actually be a center back. And then Donald Moore is pretty bad, but of course we'll still sign him for now. So let's take a look at who we actually have in the academy thus far. Eric Smith is not going to be great. Peter Bliska could be okay. We don't yet know, really. Walter Mathis is looking great. Now, it's going to take him a while, and I'm probably not going to sign any of these guys until, you know, they're actually ready to be signed, because otherwise we're just throwing them to the wolves. Jordan Williams is meh. Anthony Wilson's looking great, but he's a 49. Bliska's going to be okay. Victor Wolf's going to be okay. Sullivan's pretty bad. Martin's going to be okay. Peter Gagnon's still looking great. He's up to a 61 already. So we're actually getting pretty close to be, uh, you know, to be signing him. Jose Morgan, 61 to an 85. Peter Mathis is kind of meh. Ethan Morgan looking good, but he's only a 50. Uh, Walter Cameron also looking okay. So we have quite a few names there. We'll continue to train up who we have. Again, in the meantime, though, we'll just be breezing through this season putting the best team out there that we can at this point due to the injuries, and hoping for the best. I'll see you in December. Now, I do want to point this out because I haven't taken advantage or... Fuck. Now, I do want to point this out because I haven't taken control of the national team yet. I'm going to wait to reduce my uh, my chances of being fired by them, which is unlikely anyway, but still. Uh, Marcus Codinho has gotten the call up, which, you know... Probably expected from one of the younger players who's already established rather than a youth academy prospect. But still, somebody from our team has made the national team. It's a good sign. Hooray! It's December. It's cold. It's snowing, probably. At least where I live. Let's take a look. And in Canada, for that matter. Uh, at least most parts of it. Let's take a look at the old monthly scouting report. Only four players this time out. Evan White, who is not too shabby. We are at the point, though, where we're going to have to drop some of the... Uh, some of the dead weight, and uh, yeah, first and foremost, Jose Wolf. I'm sorry, buddy, but you are very much gone. And I'm sure there will be others not too far behind you. Eric Smith will be joining you. Not even worth signing him to help fill out the roster. Let's sign Evan White. Walter Kerr as well. Not too bad, at least. George Taylor and Frank Campbell uh, will hold off on signing them for now, just with how the trend has gone thus far. As far as how the team is doing in the league, uh, dead last, but the good thing is our rating is still at a 74, so it's not all that detrimental, I suppose. Nine points through 13 games, though, is absolutely horrific. We get the international offer from Bolivia, which we will not take. I will see, actually, it's not December, it's November. Whoops! Well... That just ruined the entire part of this, didn't it? I'll see you guys in December, November, November, De December. I'll see you guys in December. Happy December. For real, this time. Uh, we are still dead last in the league, as you would expect. Uh, also, we have sold Dylan Esmel. He'll be going to Fleetwood Town. So, good for him. He'll be on the way out. He's actually uh, on the bench right now because we are dealing with an injury to Tabla, who's out for six weeks with an elbow injury. Uh, unfortunately, the grade, our rating, started to drop. It is back up to a 72. It hit as low as a 62. Uh, so I had to change things around, make sure we were running our top players just so that we can win some games here and there. As far as who we have in the scouting report, George Taylor, 75. That's, that's not going to cut it. Uh, Frank Campbell, we can just disregard you already. Russell Smith, the good thing is we already have goalkeepers, so I'm going to wait to see just how good he actually is. Jordan Michaels will obviously be signed as we'll take a look here. So someone like Peter Bliska for a 70 potential guy, for now that's still worth us having. Obviously someone like Walter Mathis is worth having. Someone like Jordan Williams, it's a little bit too low. Anything below like a 75 potential and we're hurting. Same thing for Jordan Bliska. Uh, the potential's not bad but the overall is just so low that I don't really want to work on that. Anthony Wilson, 69 to an 83. Still not all that bad. Victor Wolf will be dropped. Colin Sullivan can stay. Peter Gagnon, again, is just a monster. Absolute monster. And we'll probably be signing him in January if we have a lot of people leave. Daniel Martin looking okay. Peter Mathis is brutal. Ethan Morgan still looking good. Jose Morgan still looking good. 
Uh, but we are focusing on Ethan Morgan right now with him being a year younger, and he's already better. Walter Cameron looking good, but has a long way to go at only a 47. Donald Moore will be dropped. Evan White looking good, and Walter Kerr... And, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop you, Walter. You're not looking that good. But the Youth Academy itself, we got a couple of decent players. Unfortunately, the majority of them are defenders, so that kind of hurts. Uh, but Jordan Michaels will definitely be signed. Jay Morgan, we had a good Jay Morgan in the Tranmere series, but he will be dropped. Daniel Martin will be dropped. Ethan Cunningham is gonna be dropped as well. Uh, so and odds are George Taylor's not gonna make it either. So we have Russell Smith sitting there. We might as well sign him for now. But we're struggling for some decent additions. Uh, but come next month, again, we have a little bit of money left. We're going to have the options to swap out some people during the January window. And again, some of those lower overall guys will be a little bit more targetable. Not to mention Atiba Hutchinson, who is not retiring. Uh, we should be able to sign him on a free if his contract is expiring. Get him on the old Bosman. So... I'm looking forward to that, but obviously some of the other guys, uh, mainly Alfonso Davies, we're going to have to wait just a little bit. But I will see you guys in January, where I'll be able to talk to you for more than two minutes straight, because there'll actually be stuff to talk about. I said there was the chance that Peter Gagnon was signed for January. Well, turns out he's going to be on this team a little bit earlier than expected. He wants out our key prospect thus far. And we are certainly not going to say no. He's a 63, 89 to 94 potential at 17 years old. An absolute monster. Let's sign him, Peter. The time has arrived. We are almost to January 1st, by the way, which is a pretty, pretty good thing to note. So let's take a look at just how good Peter Gagnon is. The 17-year-old with better, better facial hair than I, but about the same hairline. We'll be blocking all the offers for him. Attribute-wise, three-star, oh, wow. Three-star, th th three three-star, low-high work rates. The defensive workhorse can also play center back at six foot. Not too shabby. 73 spin, uh, sprint speed, 69 stamina. Peter Gagnon, welcome aboard. You will be put into this team basically immediately. But again, the good thing is the January window is about to open. We're going to have a couple of players leaving, and we'll see if we can swing any deals here right out of the gate. So let's take a look at how this goes down. Training we'll worry about in a minute. The very first thing we want to do is go to the transfer hub and take a look. So we do have everybody scouted right now. And I guess the first things first is Atiba Hutchinson, right? I mean, I should be able to... Uh, I should be able to sign him on a furry. If not, and he ended up signing a new deal, that would suck. But we'd have to make the most of it. Yeah, his contract's up in six months. We we should technically have the rights to negotiate with him, but apparently not unless the whole approach to sign deal. I hate how it sorts and it puts you right back on the player you were on. It's the dumbest. Uh, if I go approach to sign, though, I mean, it does still say club negotiation. So, I mean, obviously I'm not exactly going to be willing to give up two million bucks for someone who's on an expiring deal. So, let's, uh, let's take a look here for old Hutchinson. I mean, you're going to be a crucial player for sure. And we'll see what we can do here. Wants well, a one-year deal, which I should be able to counter for two, which will have him here for the rest of his career. And we'll disregard the release clause. Let's, ah, damn it, we're going to have to give the money total. Uh, mmm. I mean, here's the issue. He's expensive as shit. Even though it's, uh... Even though, of course, we'd be looking to sign him on a free. I'm just gonna see what he has to say about that. And, uh, we'll take it from there. Whew. 18k but wants a big signing bonus. I'm gonna accept that, maybe. Maybe. It's not the smartest move to bring him in right now. I'm going to end that, and we'll be able to renegotiate at a certain point. As much as I want to bring him in, it, it doesn't make that much sense to sign a 35-year-old to, uh, to that much. So instead, we will take a look at what else we really need right now, which you could argue another striker is at the top of the list. And obviously someone like Kyle Lorene and uh, Lucas Cavallini are very much 
out of the uh, out of the question. I mean, $15 million release clause for Cavallini, 17.8 for Larian, so that's just out of the question. Uh, Millar, I still don't think we'll be able to move. We could loan for, you know, we could go for the loan offer, which I probably will. Uh, and then again, Buchanan as well. Could look to bring these guys in on loan because we do have some strikers I'd like to get rid of. But the good thing is with Jordan Hamilton, uh, we can pretty much just hit the release clause and get him right now. So that is that is going to be the goal. And we'll see. Well, actually, then again, it's the release clause. In fairness, I'd have to negotiate with them outright. I'm indecisive on what I want to do here. Let's let's be honest. Oh God. All right. Who the hell do we want to target here? Between who do I want to bring in? Hamilton might still be the buy, though. Let's be honest. And the rest of these guys, we can just look to loan for now. Uh, unfortunately, Jonathan David is out on loan right now to Eintracht Frankfurt, so that is not going to help us. Jordan Hallett is way too expensive. Alfonso Davies is going to be way too expensive. Osorio has a 5.2 million release clause, which we can't match. So Osorio probably the better guy to go and try to get a swap deal here for. He might be just a tad bit too expensive to truly pull that off, but time will tell. It depends on who they would want here. So say we use Bergman. Are they interested? They are. So 2.2. I don't believe we can afford that technically. All right, so Osorio's still... I mean, if we're going to play it smart and safe here, Osorio and Atiba Hutchinson are just out of our range right now. Daniil Henry. Henry we should be able to get no problem. And technically we have center backs we can use to swap. So if they're looking for a straight center back swap, we're going to be fine here and we'll be able to pick up Daniil Henry from the Vancouver Whitecaps. So let's see what we have here. Center backs, Kevin Kraus would be well overvalued. Cornelius is ours. But Uzdemir, uh, let's see if uh, that's any closer. God, they'd still want a million. That's rough. What about, uh, God, proposed new transfer fee. No, I don't want a new fee. I want to offer a different player. Oh, yay, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. That's so dumb. Why can I not just offer a new player? That's a long cause. <sighs> They're not going to accept this. All right, cool, 5%. All right, well, we're going to have to end that. That's very dumb that you can't be like, oh, okay, how about instead of this player, somebody else? So Daniil Henry will probably try to go back for later on this month. Uh, let's delegate to loan. All right, that's that's not going to happen with him. Uh, can we get Clement delegate to loan? Nope. He also has a contract coming up. Maxime... Uh, Crepeau, can we get him? Nope. What about Buc uh, Buc Buchanan? Buchanan from the New England Revolution. I can't speak today. Uh, how about a nice one-year deal for Buchanan? That would be pretty nice. Why did it resort? Ah, oh, FIFA, you're so weird sometimes. You're so weird. Uh, let's see if we can get Malar as well on a one-year. It's going to keep flipping like that. But we'll see who else we can get. Again, Cavallini... His weekly wage is a lot, uh, but you know what? Yeah, we, we might as well have tried. Can we get Kyle? No, <laughs> that would have been that would have been nice, but so much for that. So we'll see if we can get Buchanan and Millar. Hamilton, I mean, right now we can still negotiate with him, and we probably will. Uh, Jonathan David again is out on loan. Hallette, we're not going to be able to get and not going to be able to buy. Alfonso Davies, it's not going to happen. Osorio, we could still look to get. Scott Arfield, yeah, that's not going to happen. What about Kay here, though? 2.8 million. He's a bit out of our price range right now, even with the swap. He's going to be just as expensive. Uh, Piet, probably not going to be able to get him. That's a no. Kanumbe, we uh, can't buy him right now. We can't loan him out either. Pretty brutal. Atakugbe is not overly expensive. Now, we do have a depth in left-back, right-back youth academy players, but if I can still get this guy, make him a little bit better, uh, that's not a terrible way to go, and then hopefully, you know, sell him on for a, a higher fee than what we're looking to pay here. 
And we'll be looking to use Shad. Dominic Shad, the Shad. Still 860. Damn. All right, well, that's not going to happen either. Man, these teams are playing hardball right now with these player swaps. They are not messing around. Gutierrez, can we get you on loan? We cannot. It's too short of a contract. Ganube won't work. Uh, James, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your first name. Can we get you on loan? Is what I meant to hit? Nope. Ken Henry's not going to work. Brault uh, Gallard here is already out on loan. Busty, we could get, and that's not too bad to at least get a better goalkeeper now. His Borean's too expensive, and we can't loan Kripo. So if we can get this, this goalkeeper, another young goalkeeper, we already have two in the system now, but if we can still get this guy, especially on a player swap, we'll be looking a little bit better as well. But obviously these January negotiations haven't exactly gone down as well as I was hoping that they would. Uh, we could move on from Wolfgang, but he doesn't have a ton of value. Is there anybody else here? Uh, dude, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name, but he'd be the perfect type of guy to use. They want a winger, center back, or goalkeeper. Damn it. Damn it. Wingers. Uh, Hemline's not too bad. Again, Hessel's going to cost us a lot of money. And Kraus is worth way more. We'll try to use Uzdemir here again. How much money are they still going to look for? 142 and a half. We will do that. Let's bring in Busty as uh, the Busty as a goalkeeper. Hopefully. And we will uh, we will delegate ye old negotiations. And I mean he was making like 900 k a week now. So he shouldn't get offended at uh, the starting wage of 1k. And then I still think we're going to look to bring in Hamilton. As expensive as that's going to be. I think it'll work out relatively well for us. It's just a matter of how expensive he's going to be. We'll give him important. See if that works out for us. Perfect. Three-year contracts. We'll be able to lock him down for four years, which is nice. I mean, obviously, he'll be playing a role for us for quite a while until we get some of these other guys to develop. And that is perfect. So Jordan Hamilton, welcome aboard. We're going to bring in him, we're going to bring in Busty, and hopefully some of these other guys on loan, and hopefully we can continue to sell some of these other players as well. Uh, so we'll continue the uh, training session that we had, trying to bump up Morgan. And of course, you know, he and Busty will be the two guys that we can really focus upon, you know, giving games, switching those two out, letting them get plenty of playing time. And uh, in terms of the office here... The monthly scouting report, which we haven't even looked at yet. <laughs> Let's see, we have Alex Cameron. Oh, God. Rogerson's an amazing name. We'll sign Cameron. Rogerson's actually not too bad. Uh, the other Rogerson's terrible. Lucas Olsen will sign. And Victor Olsen. The Olsons. Looking pretty good, all things considered. We'll see whether or not that holds up. But again, uh, already a decent little uh, window period for us here, just because of the addition of Peter Gagnon and whoever else we might be able to bring in. And we got to be a little bit careful here, because we're down to a 62 for that grade. Don't necessarily think we're in danger of being, uh, being fired just yet, but still. So let's see what we got here. So we got an agreement for Liam Millar to join us on loan, which we will take. Uh, we're taking on 100% of his wage, which is painful, but I'll still do it. And then, of course, we'll look to buy him back eventually, or actually, you know, eventually outright buy him, which is why I was tempted to not get players on loan, but I'm hoping we're able to sell quite a few people. Uh, Millar did not want to uh, join the club. Okay, but we will be getting uh, Alessandro Busti, so let's accept that offer. We have ourselves in the goalkeeper and the Buchanan loan. We will accept that, taking on 100% of his wages from the New England Revolution. So I'll have another training session coming up here, and we'll see what the rest of January has in store for us. Buchanan rejected. That sucks. That is a damn shame. Let's keep working on trying to get Wilson up towards a 60. That's what we're doing with Cameron as well. Rather than focusing on the guys... Uh, like even Peter Gagnon in training, 
I'm trying to bump up the other guys who are promising, getting them to a usable point for this league, rather than making Peter Gagnon a superstar. He'll probably get there on his own without much training at this point in time anyway. Uh, it's a different approach than what I did with Tranmere, but it's one that I feel like might work out for the best. Time will tell there. But we don't have any goddamn games here. It's a lovely thing, as we'll be able to pretty much get this team sorted. And again, another training session. The one thing that scares me right now is the distinct lack of offers that we are seeing for a lot of our players. It's really going to limit what we're able to do with the rest of this window. As it is, uh, I mean, our, our budget's shot. We got nothing left. So there won't be any other moves unless we start selling some of these players because the rest of that budget is going to have to go towards sell or towards uh, signing youth academy guys once they demand to be brought up. So it's so looking like it's going to be a very, very quiet January indeed. As we'll go ahead and do that again. No progression. Of course, focusing on just trying to get stamina up, especially for a winger like Wilson. It's going to be so crucial. And again, if once we start playing games, I'll be probably running three at the back just to make it that much more difficult rather than messing with sliders like I mentioned. And uh, yeah, stamina is going to be very... Very important as Baloo Tabla is back to 100% or at least close to it from injury. Our grade, though, is down to a 61. Don't necessarily think we're in danger of, uh, of being you know sacked just yet, but it could end up being pretty close. As we desperately, desperately need offers. It's actually down to a 59. All right, I'm, I'm a little bit scared. Perhaps at the end of the season, we got to do what we got to do. Maybe play a couple of games just to make sure we don't get sacked from this first season. But next season, I imagine, is when I'll start playing a couple of games. I, I know we're not on track. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. Give it time. Trust the process. You want to make it to the Champions League like Tranmere did? Good. Then be quiet. I will restore you to your past glory just for the love of God. Give me some time. Just give me a second. So, Paul Pogba. Sold the fucking Barcelona because why not? Why not? Rumors that he's not gonna be on, gonna be on the move again. Hey, hey, there it is. We didn't even have to ask for it. You know what? I will take it. They expect us to qualify for the World Cup. Tough challenge, but you know what? Let's do it. Let's make it official. We have finally signed on to be the head coach of Team Canada. This series, if it wasn't officially underway before, it is officially underway now. Old man Tug moving on to Canada. And, uh, the, you know, the early stages of this series, the, the seeds have been planted. As we have some members, you know, finally joining the team, already established players, the youth academy is growing. But my god, have we just been completely screwed by a lack of, you know, teams not going after our players. Which, I'm not surprised, because you would think it would be only, you know, other third-tier players or third-tier teams going for these players, and they see that we're in dead last. So where's the appeal, I suppose? But deadline day has come to a close. We weren't able to do a ton, but overall, not too bad. In terms of scouting, Andrew Cunningham, not bad, very promising. David Gibbs will hold off on signing. Peter Jackson, great director, but will hold off on signing. And Eric Cooper will look to sign outright. So Russell Smith, 67 to an 83. Peter Bliska is going to be a low-end 70. Walter Mathis is looking good. Alex Cameron still looking okay. Anthony Wilson, again, 75 to an 81, which is why we're trying to train him up a little bit. Andrew Rogerson, we don't know yet, but it's not looking good. Andrew Cunningham's looking pretty good. Colin Sullivan is not worth signing. Daniel Martin and Jose Morgan. Morgan's kind of the odd man out as a goalkeeper now. Lucas Olsen, Ethan Morgan... 72 to an 80, Jordan Michaels, Walter Cameron, a lot of similar names. Victor Olsen could be half decent, and Evan White. So a decent core of players that Eric Cooper will join. And again, we'll be signing a lot of those guys heading into next season once we slowly but surely move away from the talent that we already have on the roster now, uh, which includes Hamilton and Boosty. So that's perfect. So Boosty will be... The new starting goalkeeper. 
again, Dunn and some of these other guys, Florian Dick will be leaving. Uh, at the end of this season, his contract is up. So it'll be Hamilton next to Spalvis, and then Huth and uh, the other dude here. Actually, let's put Bayer on the bench. So there's a couple of options there. Very nice, though, to finally have a proper amount of defenders. Uh, Peter Gagnon is in, no doubt. That is the defense right there. An all-Canadian back line, not too bad. When Gagnon at a 64 is the weakest, that's a decent sign that we're looking okay. Uh, it'll be Sternberg and Dunn on the bench. Try to get Dunn a little bit of playing time when we can. And then for the rest of these guys, it's it's a bit rough. Actually, so Kraus. We're probably going to want Kraus in over Dunn. But I want Dunn to play a little bit. So Kraus is just kind of screwed. <laughs> if you think about it. He can't. I mean, he's one of our best players for sure. A brick shithouse back there. You know, we got to make sure we win some games. So unfortunately, Dunn is uh, going to be the odd man out. Let's get Frazier in next to Bergman. That dude can technically play left mid and hemline there. So we'll actually put in Tabla on the left-hand side. Again, Dunn's going to be the odd man out. We have so many strikers, it's absolutely ridiculous. So let's take out Dunn. We'll go with Colin and Okello as uh, options on the bench. And from there, I think we're good. Although, mm, you know what? Buyer's gonna, buyer's gonna move up. That actually, you know what? Now we're fine. We're fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So that's gonna be the team, pretty much, for the rest of the season, unless somebody looks to step up. Again, I want to finish this season, so I will see you guys on March first, and we'll see how this next month goes. We could easily find ourselves, you know, you know, a little bit higher in the standings. Please. It's March! We're not in last! A true Christmas miracle, judging by my ability to tell what month it is in this episode. Hey, who, who's, who says no? Who's to say I'm wrong? Let's take a look at the prospects. David Gibbs, meh. Peter Jackson, that's, that's going to be a no for me. Champ, hello, there we go. Tyler Williams, please, you're going to be a winger, more than likely, or a very small center forward. Yes, though. Welcome, Tyler. Let's take a look at who we might have to drop from this list. Again, Peter Bliska, still probably worth holding on to, maybe. But then again, there's also Walter Mathis, and we already have Godinho. So, you know what, Bliska? I think for now we drop you, but maybe we'll see you on Team Canada someday. And I think that's the one thing we have to really think about right now is, is you know, we're getting already kind of close to the point where it's like, oh, okay, maybe we don't have to just worry... Sorry, Eric. Maybe we don't have to worry about just getting people onto the team. Maybe we're going to be getting good enough prospects through this first season. Uh, Noah Wilson will hold off on. George Clark. Yes, ma'am. And Larry Rogerson, because we need to sign all of our games broadcasted to you by Sportsnet. Uh, <laughs> at this point, uh, you know, wow. We're, and Clark's already a 61. Good lord. You know what? We're signing George Clark immediately, instantly. From scouted to get on a plane, you're being signed. He is already worth signing, no doubt about that. And we have a spot on that right-hand side where Heimland's playing where we can put him onto this team. Cornelius is the one that went down to injury, by the way. But let's take a look here at Clark. Exciting is good currently rotation attribute wise <sighs> not amazing unfortunately at three star three star medium low but it's okay it's okay it could have been better obviously for this beggars can't be choosers but uh yeah it, it could have been it could have been a little bit better as he'll make his way into the starting team cornelius will sit for kraus and that will get done onto the bench as a depth option. So Clark and Peter Gagnon both in the lineup already. And we will continue onward. I will see you in April. Uh, we don't have anything to worry about with the national team thus far. Although you know the names and faces there will be changing sooner rather than later. I'll talk to you soon. We're almost done. Hooray. With season one at least.
Interesting moment here. Lucas Spalvis, who is our top striker right now and arguably the most valuable player we have, we've gotten an offer for him from Hanover for $5 million, which would be tremendous if we can move him out. Obviously, that'll open up room to bring in some other of the low-value players that we have on our short list heading into the next season or so. We actually get another offer as well, 5.2 from Fulham. So, Spalvis is a wanted man, and hopefully we can move him out and bring in a little bit of help in terms of the current financial situation, as apparently, of course, we're not on track. We're all well aware <laughs> that we're not on track. Your track, but we're on my track, damn it, as Bergman scores the 85th minute winner. That might take us out of 19th, if we're lucky. Yeah, it did. We're up to 18th. Look at that! We're not. Hey, as long as we don't finish dead last, I consider this season an absolute success. No doubt about it. As long as we don't finish dead last, we're looking okay. Have hope. I mean, because that's really all I can ask you to do. As I want to see here, national squad submission deadline coming up. Which will we? Uh, we'll, we'll, how long do we have until that? March 19th. We have a friendly coming up. Uh, let's sim through this game. I believe against Braunschweig. Uh, the Braunschweig. Probably Braunschweig. Schweig, Schwag, Schweig. 2 0 win. Spalva scored a pen and Tabla scored in the 81st minute. Uh, 80, 81st? 81st! Whew. I'm having to record videos in advance because I was alerted uh, by my neighbor. Like, oh, I'm going to be power washing windows and stuff. So, yeah. And I'm like, oh, good. Well, I'm on a normal person schedule right now. So either. Well, actually, in fairness, if I'm, on, if I'm on my normal schedule, my normal sleeping schedule, Spalvis was sold, by the way, to Hanover. Uh, basically, it's either going to be disrupting recording or my sleep. So, you know, considering I'm actually awake like a normal person today, it would be disrupting recording. So I'm getting this video done a day in advance, and I'm, I'm just, I'm done. It's hot as hell in this room. It's the third video I've recorded. I'm done. I'm over it. But... Quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's uh, let's take a look at the old national team, shall we? Who are the best options? So Borian, Crepo, and Lutweiler. Are those really the best options? They are. That's unfortunate. So they'll stay. Uh, center back wise, we do probably want to carry three. But uh, I'm going to put Cornelius in instead of Straith for obvious reasons. Cornelius is ours. Uh, two left backs, two right backs. Do we have anybody better than who we have? I mean, number one, Atacugbe is not bad. Peter Gagnon, going in. You've made the national team already. And, of course, Godinho's already in. Abrault Gallard will uh, be staying for now. No problem there. Uh, aside from that, I don't know. I think, number one, let's get Atiba Hutchison in there. I don't really care what this team looks like. It's just, let's just make sure we have the highest players available. Right? Right. So, uh, we'll do that. And you know what? For now, we'll fi we're, we're fine. Although, let's get Jordan Hamilton there. So, there you go. There's the squad that'll be playing in our first friendly at the helm of this uh, national team. Even though we're really not going to care. I'll see you guys at the next milestone, I guess. Olsen's up to a 56. You know, in fairness, though, I suppose a milestone would be our first international game. We're playing India, the lowest-rated international side in FIFA. So I'd like to think we're going to be able to get a win here, right? Please? We'll at least pay attention to it as... By the way, we're up to 16th in the league, but it's our first-ever game at the helm of Canada. We'll leave that team the way it is. We don't really have to be concerned. It's a friendly against India, who somehow drew Brazil, so now I'm concerned we won 3-0. Never mind. Never mind. Junior Hallett, two goals. And Alfonso Davies also gets on the board. So, a very good hands-on approach there. Oh, God, that's Ecuador, isn't it? This could be... No, it's Colombia. I always confuse the two. We're going to get smashed. <laughs> Let's just leave the team as is. We're going to have a rough time against Colombia. Uh, apparently, they drew us in the last game that they had played before we took over. They're off a win against Peru. Uh, Cavallini scored. They do have James Rodriguez in, which is very concerning. But let's sim the rest of this. 2-1 win. James scored. 
in the 85th, but Scott Arfield's goal in the 55th minute holds up as the winner. You know, beating India, not too much to brag about. We beat Colombia in a friendly. You know, so maybe, just maybe, if this if this idea fails at a club level, we'll just go to a new club if we get fired, build things up, and we'll still have those uh, those players ready for the national team. As Evan White wants out of the academy, I honestly don't remember how good or bad he happens to be. Evan, where are you, buddy? You're towards the bottom. 73 to an 81, 54 overall, Evan White. We'll sign him, absolutely, and we'll see how good he happens to be. Hopefully the, uh, you know, the work rates and everything happen to be somewhat decent. That would be helpful. We haven't had a ton of luck on that front just yet. Three star, three star, medium low. That seems to be, no, I don't want to add the loan list, although it might not be the worst option. That seems to be just the go-to thus far for generated Canadians. It's just, it's not bad, but it's not great. As we get our final report from this first nine month stint, David Gibbs will sign for the moment. Frazier won't be signed. Martin won't be signed, more than likely. Probably not. He's someone who'll just be dropped. Thomas Bliska, Noah Wilson, Frank James, two first names, and we'll be looking to sign him up. Is there anybody who's kind of a clear cut, not going to make it? Andrew Rogerson. Again, great name, but you're on the way out. Jose Morgan confirmed to be a 70 potential keeper. Lucas Olson's a 37. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and release him for now as well. Now that we're going to start again to be. Uh, just a little bit more ruthless. Ethan Wolf will look to sign. Walter Park will look to sign. Okay, so now now we're getting some players who might have a slightly higher ceiling, which you love to see. Again, Gibbs is 18 and a 50. He's out. Is there anybody else who's an obvious release here? Morgan. <sighs> Morgan, you, you've been eclipsed by players that we already have. So Jose Morgan will be dropped, somebody that we might still see on the national team a few years from now, but we'll sign Walter Park, Josh Campbell. <sighs> We're going to hold off on because that overall is going to be low. So that is it for the first nine months of scouting, but of course we'll be sending said scout right back out there. You're going to spend so much time, you're going to be able to become a naturalized citizen sooner rather than later. Uh, that's another 100, 171 grand, but have another fun nine months out in Canada. So we are, again, approaching the end of season one. It's where I wanted to be. As we pick up a 2-0 win, Clark scored in the 88th minute. Good stuff. And I will see you guys again at the next milestone as we're up to 15th. Our job should be safe. The long season has almost come to an end. It is May 1st. Let's get to what will be at least our penultimate, I would imagine, scouting report. We get Brian Smith, a 6'6 goalkeeper, Noah Rogerson, who we might as well sign, Max James, and Joseph Wood. Damn. Damn. So goalkeeper-wise, kind of a tough call. Smith can stay for now. Mathis, of course, is still good. Cameron not looking too bad. It's so weird how it's not properly so Like, you can't sort this. I hate this menu so much. Rogerson 58 to an 80. Ugh, it's a bit shaky. Is there anybody who, again, is a clear, like, okay, get rid of this guy. He's not going to make it. And the answer looks to be no, unfortunately. So, it's either sign somebody now, like Anthony Wilson, who's at least up to a 60 or Ethan Morgan. You know what? Ethan Morgan's going to be signed. And of course, he and Busty are going to be the two goalkeepers that we have. We won't sign Max James at the moment. By the end of this season, of course, we're going to be clearing out the Youth Academy and seeing, you know, truly what we're dealing with here. Uh, but I will see you guys soon to wrap up this first season of this episode. Final three games of the season coming up. And then we should be able to get to June 1st and have our final scouting report of season one we'll also take a look back at the team at least the players that matter to us to see how they did 
Our season has come to a close. We finished 14th, 41 points through 38 games, which is absolutely abysmal. But for once, I was uh, you know applauded by the board. It also gets us nearly $1.5 million that we'll be able to put, hopefully, to good use heading towards the next season. So, overall... I would consider this first season a success. We were able to bring in some people. Alex Cameron's going to need to be signed. We were able to bring in some people. Uh, we didn't finish dead last. You know, we haven't been fired. I mean, yeah, we didn't finish mid-table like the board wanted. But overall, I'm feeling pretty good. So Cameron is 72 to an 80, currently a 58. Oh, God. Was it him or Walter Cameron? It was Alex Cameron. Uh, you know what? Screw it. We'll sign him. He's not great. But he'll be able to play a role for us, at least for now, uh, just to be able to, you know, help fill out this team next year. So let's take a look at him. We might as well. Cameron, you watch. You'll have the best stats, right? Yep, knew it. Five-star, three-star, medium-high. Outrageous. Five stars. Five star skills for someone who's has uh, for someone who has medium high work rates is a slap in the face from the EA gods. <laughs> but Alex Cameron, welcome aboard. Walter Cameron. Well, shit. Should have just signed both of you then, huh? Walter Cameron also wants out. Uh, his overall was a little bit concerning. He's a 47, but he has good potential. So now you see why I was trying to bolster up some of the attributes of the lower overall guys in case they have good potential and they say hey I want to sign you know someone like Walter Cameron right now is going to be completely useless to us heading into the beginning of next season uh, pretty much once Mathis and Olsen here hit 60s uh, we'll be focusing on Cameron almost exclusively it would probably be worth it just to make him that much uh, you know, just to make him useful to us you know, get him up towards a 60 and then leave them alone and let the development continue on. So we have expiring contracts for three players who are relevant to us. Let's go sort those deals out really quickly before we get to our final bit of scouting for this year. So over to Yield Financial. And it is going to be good old Colin. Let's delegate the renewal there and see if that works. He shouldn't get offended. One-year deal. Let's do it. It's fine by me. Uh, Balu Tabla. Let's delegate the renewal there. Get him for three years at 2-5. That's tremendous. And Liam Frazier. We get him for one year at 1-6. So, perfect. We're not losing anybody who is overly irrelevant to us. That would be a disaster, really, to pick up someone and then immediately lose them. We're not on track. That's fine. Let's take a look at the scouting yet again. This will be pretty much our final update on the scouting for this episode. Dennis Cooper needs to be signed. Anthony Clark should probably be signed. David Park should absolutely be signed. So let's see who we have here. Now, Brian Smith, I mean, yeah, you're going to be dropped. Just compared to Russell Smith, uh, you're, we you know, you're weaker already. You got the height, but we'll be dropping him. Walter Mathis, we might as well just sign now, because he's going to ask to be signed very soon. So, Mathis will be signed. Rogerson can stay. Cunningham can stay. Anthony Wilson should probably be signed, because he's going to ask to be signed soon. So, let's just get that out of the way. And so far, there's really nobody else to cut. Like, we're looking pretty good. Anthony Clark... 49 at 17, you know, God, those sub-50 overalls are killers sometimes. Larry Rogerson is going to be dropped, and then Walter Park again. It's going to take a while to build him up, but that's not too bad. Oh, my God. Okay, we need to start setting this up to not be scouting goalkeepers, clearly. Uh, we'll sign Cohen Wilson. We'll sign Dennis White. And we'll sign David Park. Although, in terms of signing goalkeepers, it's not a bad idea because those are the guys that you can build up quickly and then sell for a lot of profit. So if we're going to be getting Alfonso Davies sooner rather than later, it's going to be the goalkeepers that get us there. As I will have to completely take a look at training uh, once we begin the next episode. So let's take a look at how the team did this year. Again, at least the players that are relevant to us. So Busty, a plus two, up to a 64, had 14 appearances for us, it's not too bad. Ethan Morgan ended up with three appearances, he's still at a 64, 
Walter Mathis, of course, who we just signed, but we can take a look at Walter. Three star, five star for the right back who will probably actually play center back. Medium, medium work rates. Of course, the five star weak foot is wasted on the defender. That's just how it works. Marcus Godinho up three points. Not too bad. Up to a 67 at 30 appearances for us with a goal and two assists. Julian Dunn up by three to a 54, had eight appearances this year. Andre Hano, the captain, down to a 65, but 42 appearances for us this season. Not too shabby. Derek Cornelius with 28 appearances. He's up to a 66. Who else? Walter Cameron, who, of course, we just signed recently. Two-star, five-star, high-medium work rates for the left back. Six-foot-two as well. Might be better as a center back, but... Even then, high medium, just ugh, for a taller, for a taller uh, fullback, it's just weird. Peter Gagnon up by four, he's up to a 67, 17 years old. Again, probably the future captain of this team. Noble Okello up by five to a 62. Frazier up by three to a 63, not too bad. George Clark up by two to a 63, ended up making 13 appearances. Evan White didn't make any appearances, but he's a 56. Again, three-star, three-star, medium, low work rates for him. Alex Cameron, five-star, three-star, medium, high for him, which is still just weird. Baloo Tabla up by three to a 66, made 25 appearances. Simon Collins, 17 appearances, up to a 55, so still a bit weak for him. Jordan Hamilton, 17 appearances, only one goal, but he's up to a 67. Theo Beyer, again, I guess it would be 12 appearances, one goal, for the 57 overall, again at six foot four, which is not too bad. And then Anthony Wilson, <laughs> just the the contrast. Theo down to Anthony Wilson, tremendous. But Wilson, three star, three star, high low. That's okay for a winger at least. Again, you'd kind of like uh, kind of like a higher weak foot, but that is what it is. So that pretty much concludes our first season. Again, heading into July, you know, we'll have that scouting report done and dusted. But this first season is over with, and again, I'm feeling pretty good about it. We've built a decent foundation to what this team is going to be. The hope is that obviously, I mean, we know Spalvis is already going, but the hope is we can move on from some of these other non-Canadians. But the team heading into next year, as early as next year, will be made up primarily of Canadians, obviously with the players that we brought in this past season and the players from the Youth Academy. It'll be interesting to see how we do in the league. I'm kind of excited about that, but then obviously, again, there are some guys that we're going to want to train up and make them half decent, but it's a decent start. One season done in two episodes. That is not a bad pace. That quick pace will continue until we are... Uh, just a little bit more competitive as Liverpool win the league. Who says this game's unrealistic? They don't win the league. Damn it, they won the Champions League. Forgot to say the word champion. Champions of Europe six times. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. And again, hopefully once the foundation for this team is built, we get into playing some games and get out of the third tier, it gets to be a little bit more dramatic. But for now, again, decent building blocks. I will see you guys in the next one, I hope. Till then, have a good one. Take it easy. Goodbye.